Okay, folks, so we're going to start with uh, section 2.1, talking about binary variables. So let's get to it. So we're considering a single binary variable. So that means by binary, we of course mean that x is going to be in 0 or 1. So, and you know, the most common example of this is like flipping a coin, so like 1 could be heads. Um, so now he says, okay, we can imagine this is a damaged coin, so the probability of landing heads is not necessarily the same as landing tails. So basically, it's not a fair coin. So there is some parameter mu that's going to determine the probability of, uh, of the coin landing heads. This, this is the way we parameterize the probability distribution here. So the probability of x being equal to 1 given mu is just that parameter mu. And of course, because the probability of it landing heads or tails is going to be 0 um, to 1. And because the probabilities, so given a mu, the probability of x equals 1 or x plus the probability of x equals 0 have to sum to 1, because one of those things has to happen, you can just figure out that the probability of x equals 0 is 1 minus mu. So this is just, um, let's just spell it out a little bit. So, so this is just from the fact that you know, probability of x equals, you don't even need a sum, plus the probability of x equals 0 given mu has to equal to 1, right? So given mu, there's only two possibilities, and, and, the, and the probability of, you know, their sum has to be equal to 1. And so since we've already said that the probability of x being equal to 1 is, um, so this this already uh, is let me change that. This is already mu, so this mean, this means that p of x equals zero is one minus mu, which is what we have here. Okay, so now he says the probability distribution over x can therefore be written in the form burn da 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 da, da uh, which is known as the Bernoulli distribution. Okay, so this is like might might seem a little bit strange when you first look at it. So let's kind of zoom in. Let's make sure you guys can see. The Bern is just, it's just the name that we're going to give it from the Bernoulli distribution, I guess, named after the Bernoullis who first, who first um, came up with it. And so to understand kind of this form, uh, I mean, one way is that it's kind of a compact way of saying, you can think of it as a compact way of saying, um, let me get a pen here. So this is the same as, if you want to think of kind of coding terms, um, so Bern one given mu is equal to mu and burn zero given mu is equal to one minus mu right because when x is equal to one only this term shows up and when burn when x is equal to zero only this term shows up so let's just do that again just just to make sure so let's do burn one given mu is going to be equal to mu to the one. So this is our this is our x value times one minus mu to the one minus one. So this is this is going to equal to zero. Let me zoom out again. So this whole thing is just going to equal to mu. And similarly in the other case. So you can see that this is kind of a compact way of writing. Um, the probability so you don't have to do like if x is 1 or if x is 0 it captures both so whenever x is equal to 1 whenever x is equal to 1 this part is active and this just this second term just becomes 1 and when x is 0 this part becomes 1 and this term remains okay so it's not it's you know it's just they need a little bit of unpacking okay it's easily verified this distribution is normalized and it has mean and variance given by expectation of, so these are, that's, this is a simple one and you guys should, should work this out. Um, and also it's pretty useful to use this definition of the variance when you're computing the, the, the variance. So if you do that, then you get the answer very quickly. Okay, so now suppose we have a data set, let me zoom this back out. Suppose we have a data set D of observed values of x, and we always assume in this chapter that the, these data points are independent. So it's like, imagine you have the same coin, but you're just flipping it n times. We can construct a likelihood function, which is a function of mu, on the assumption the observation is drawn independently. So that's just what I said. So this, says, this, says, so this is kind of a setting where you're, you're trying to 
you know, flip your coins and then figure out, you know, what, whether they're fair or not. So you flip it a bunch of times and, you know, let's say you flipped it 10,000 times and you got all heads, you'll know with some, you know, with, with some confidence that that mu is probably close to one. But anyway, so we, we formed this, uh, we formed the probability of observing our data given a particular mu. And so just to unpack this a tiny bit, so P of, so we've got up here, we've got up here that our data is x1 to x of n. So make sure you guys can see me. Okay, so P of x1, xn, whatever given mu. Now because they're independent, that's why we can write this as P of x1 given mu times P of x2 given mu, etc. So that, that's, where, that's where this comes from. And then we just plug in our Bernoulli thing for each one of those. And notice now that it's x of n. So each one of those coin tosses, we have to plug in what, what the actual result was. Now it says, okay, in the frequency setting, so when we're not using any priors, we can estimate a value of mu by maximizing the likelihood function. So we're going to take this thing and maximize it at a function of mu. Um, now, almost always, we instead of maximizing this, we'll maximize the log likelihood. And they'll have the same maximum because the logarithm is um, a monotonic function. So, so it's always increasing. So wherever the maximum of, of p happens, the maximum of log p will also happen in the same place. And so in the case of the Bernoulli distribution, the log likelihood function is given by, so we're just literally applying, so this, this, this product becomes a sum, and now we just apply the logarithm to this thing. And so, the, again, this, this product itself can be split now into two parts, into the sum of two parts. Um, and so let's, let's color code them. So this becomes that, and this becomes that. So... Just, just very simple. Okay, and now it says at this point, it's worth noting the log likelihood function depends on the n observations x only through their sum sigma x, sigma sum on n of x of n. So, so that's 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 uh, true because you'll notice here that um, we can actually write this. For example, I'll just do it for the first part. We can write this term as ln mu times sum x of n, right? So, and similarly for the other one. So it's not the, indi the, indi the individual tosses, of course, matter, but only in terms of their sum. There isn't a more complicated dependence. This sum provides an example of a sufficient statistic for the data under this distribution. And so we're going to talk about that when we talk about exponential families later. But that's kind of a cool thing to know. So uh, it's a cool concept in that, you know, if you have large data sets, in you know these at least in the simpler settings, you don't have to keep the whole data set. If you're trying to figure out you know what is the you know what is the the parameter of this coin, you don't have to like keep the whole history of your million coin tosses. You can just add, just keep a running sum. So that's a single as a single value, and that's all you need to um, compute mu. Okay, if we set the derivative of ln this this thing we've been working on, if we set it uh, to zero, which you guys should do. You get that the the mu, the maximum likelihood estimate. So we've got this likelihood, we've maximized it, is very intuitively the average of the tosses, and you can you can you can see that like you know in the case when it's a fair coin, it gives the right answer, right? You know, on average, about half of those are going to be heads, so you're going to get you know n over two heads, and divided by n, you get um, one half, and similarly for when it's not a fair coin. Okay. So what does the sample mean? If we denote the number of observations of x equals one with this data set within this data set by m, then we, we can write 2.7 in the form m over n. So all he's saying is, look, you've got the one over n, and let's just add up the number of heads. We'll call this, we'll just call this thing m. So this is just equal to m over n. Okay. Um, so he says this is that the probability of landing heads is given in this maximum likelihood setting by the fraction of observation of heads in the data set. Now that sounds that sounds fine, and in you know if you have lots of data, that's absolutely fine. But what he's going to point out now is that if you have a small number of data points, that's going to give you some funny results. So now suppose we flip the coin say three times and happen to observe three heads, then well n is equal to three because we've tossed it three times, 
but we've got heads three times. So mu ML, so our maximum likelihood estimate is one. So this thing is gonna say, predict that all future observations should give heads. And that kind of seems a little bit crazy, right? So common sense tells us that this is unreasonable, right? Like it's, you, so you see, we kind of have, we have our own priors on what, you know, what coins are like, but we haven't incorporated those here. So the maximum likelihood says, well, three tosses, three heads, this thing is uh, fully biased to, to always produce heads. We shall see shortly how to arrive at a more sensible conclusion through the introduction of a prior distribution. So I'm actually gonna highlight that uh, in, there we go. Okay, so that prior is gonna incorporate our prior knowledge about what, how, what, you know, the coins we've seen in the world. Okay, so now we're gonna, so, so that's kind of a, a single, you know, the single coin. Now we can also work out the distribution of the number m of observations of x equals one, given the data set has size n. So this is called the binomial distribution, and we see that it's proportional to mu of m. Okay, so mu of m, this 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 function. Okay, so first let's just think, what are we talking about? So we're so you know we have let's say you've, you've tossed the coin n times, and you want to know what is the probability that I will observe four heads or you know three heads or whatever it is. So that's kind of what you're after. That's that's what we're going to be talking about here. Here's actually a graph of that, which you guys can see. So this is, you know, um, n is equal to 10, and mu is equal to 0.25. So we have a coin that's that's biased towards being heads all the time. And now we can ask, well, like, what's if I toss it n times, how likely am I to get, you know, 10 heads? And it says, you know, pretty unlikely. You're you're most likely to get two heads, and on average, it'll be, you know, whatever it is. Okay. So this is kind of the distribution we're interested in. This is. Um, this is going to be called, um, you know, the binomial distribution uh, for n equals 10, mu equals 0 0.25, something like that. So this is a binomial distribution. Okay, so now this next part that he says, okay, so we see that it's proportional to mu of m. So why does he say that? Well, okay, so he says it's proportional. So we don't know what the proportional constant is, but it's like, well, if you have, um, you know, we know that the probability of it coming up heads is going to be is mu. So there's kind of a mu to the m. There's there's going to be mu to the m there because we've gotten m heads, and the rest of the time we've got, we've tossed tails. So this is the probability of tails, and we've got n minus m tails. So that's why the probability of observing that many is going to be proportional to um, this number. But it's not going to be, you know, exactly this because there's lots of different ways of getting m heads out of n, um, out of n tosses, right? You, the first m could have become, you know, heads, you know, it could have alternated, whatever. There'll be all just all different combinations. So you have to account for all those different ways. So you're going to, what you're going to get is you're going to get this probability, but multiply it by all the ways that it's possible to get, to choose m elements out of n to be heads. And that's, this is called a binomial coefficient. You can also call it n choose. Um, I'll write that down. It's also like n choose. This is the way you would say it. I, you know, I rarely call it the binomial coefficient n choose m. That's kind of what it's, what it's called. And it's got this, uh, this, this form. If you, you know, one way, you know, I just thought of knowing why, of why it has this particular form. You can just remember it. Um, but one way you can kind of think about it is you can say, well, so this is the number number of ways of picking of picking um, m you know m items out of n identical items. So how do we come up with this formula? So you can imagine, okay, so let's let's try lining up. So we're going to line up our m items. So this is like number one to number n. And let's say we're going to say, okay, let's, let's, have, let's suppose we have this idea that what we're going to do is we're going to take the first M. So there's, there's M here, there's N minus M there. And we're like, okay, so the number of ways is, so, so that's one way if we, if we, if we put the number, you know, if we just pick some ordering, but there are N factorial orderings of the elements, right? Because, you know, let's say we took, you know, we call them, you know, one, two, three, all the way to n. Well, one ordering is to, you know, put them all in order. Then, you know, maybe a better way to think about it is you can, you can choose n places for the first one, 
then n minus 1 places for the second one, n minus 2 places for the third one, etc. So that will give you n times n minus 1, da, da, you know, times 1, n factorial ways of arranging those items, and we'll take the first m. So we're like, so you could say, oh, well, there's n factorial ways of picking m items. But actually, you can see that inside this first m, there is m factorial ways of rearranging those to still pick the same set of m items. So we can kind of rearrange uh, the first m items in m factorial ways. So we have to divide our um, we have to divide our n factorial, so our total number of ways of rearranging things, by m factorial to account for the number of ways of rearranging the first, you know, the group that we're going to take. And then there's n minus 1, n minus m factorial ways of rearranging the ones we're not going to take. And so that's kind of where this comes from. So that's just one way. So, you, you know, you start with n, n factorial ways of rearranging n items and taking the first m. But then there are m factorial ways of rearranging those first m and n minus m factorial ways of rearranging the ones you didn't take. So maybe that'll give you some intuition for how to come up with this, with this expression. Um, so yeah, so that's so the, so the total probability is the probability of one such selection, which is mu m one minus mu to the n minus m, times the number of ways of picking um, m items out of n. Okay. So now the next thing. So we've got this binomial distribution. Then we want to know the mean and variance. The mean and variance of the binomial distribution can be found by using the results of x as one point ten, which you should do. That for independent events. This is a very useful property, so you should remember this. It will make your life a lot easier in many, many situations. For independent events, so that's really important, um, the mean of the sum is the sum of the means, and the variance of the sum is the sum of the variances. So m is the sum of, notice that m is the sum of n Bernoulli events, right? So these are all Bernoulli. This is Bernoulli. Right? These are all just single coin tosses. Okay, so that means that the expectation of our binomial random variable, which is, and this is just the formula for the expectation, is just n times, this is the expectation of a Bernoulli random variable with parameter mu. Right? So this is just the mean of the, the expected value for the number of, of, uh, of heads is just n times the probability of getting one head, which is kind of intuitive, right? So you can say, well, uh, you know, if the, on average I will get a head with probability mu, well, then if I do it 100 times, on average, I should get about n times mu heads. And that's exactly what this says. And the variance, again, this is the variance of the Bernoulli uh, random variable. And so we've got n times the variance of that because they're independent. So this is kind of a, so you can, you can, you can indeed go through and like, you know, just, you know, look at the, you know, check out, plug in, you know, this, this thing for the binomial distribution here and just, you know, turn the crank and, um, you know, and, and you know, find the variances, etc. Or you can just use the fact that this distribution, the, bi the bi binomial, is actually the sum of a bunch of Bernoullis, independent Bernoullis, and then and those are really easy to work with, and so then you can just get your mean and variance really simply, you know, basically in one line. So that's a very good trick. Um, I expect it will come up all the time. So it's a really good one to remember um, for computing these um, these properties. Okay, very good. So I think that's where we'll stop in this one. Um, in the next. Uh, in the next section, so in the next video, we'll talk about the beta distribution, which is a way of uh, putting a prior on uh, Bernoulli random variables. So hope to see you then. Bye.